York. Here is Jane Pauley. A super secret organization like the CIA is going to have secrets, but this sounded too bizarre to be true. Yet there it was, in print, in a respected newspaper. The accusation that the crack epidemic which ravaged this country's cities was spread with help from a secret army linked to the CIA. As you may recall, the story set off a firestorm of controversy. Then last month, a surprising twist. The newspaper which had first published this astounding story started to back away from it. Is the story true or not? Tonight, Bob McEwen takes a second look. We are sick and tired of your excuses. And I hope that you'll help to put an end to it because we are tired and we're hurt and we're angry. I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. It was an American first. The director of the CIA, one of the country's most secretive institutions, facing the public at a town meeting in South Central Los Angeles. If this information turns up wrongdoing, if it turns up wrongdoing, we will bring the people to justice and make them accountable. An extraordinary event in response to an extraordinary accusation that people working with the CIA had a hand in sparking the crack epidemic that has devastated America's inner cities. Those charges came from this man, reporter Gary Webb of the San Jose Mercury News. He became one of the most talked about journalists in the country, his story the most controversial of the past year, because after investigating the origins of the crack epidemic, he claimed he found a link leading right to the CIA. Men who were working for the CIA's army were responsible for bringing all that cocaine into Los Angeles that sparked the crack epidemic. The CIA's army, Webb says, were the Contras, the anti-communist rebels fighting the government of Nicaragua back in the 1980s, an army founded and funded by the CIA. Webb wrote that some Contra supporters smuggled cocaine to America to raise money for their cause. The CIA has been bringing drugs into this country. As then CIA Director John Deutsch discovered, it's an accusation that rings true for many, especially for some in the African American community. And Webb's story has taken on a life of its own. And Gary, this, this on the talk show circuit and the internet, some have even gone beyond Webb's charges to accuse the CIA of conspiring to target young African Americans. Was the CIA willing to poison our cities and crack with crack cocaine? On the basis of what you learned, do you believe that there was a conscious decision, a, a, a meeting where someone sat down and said, we're going to poison the youth of black America and here's how we're going to do it? No, no, I don't. These guys were looking to raise money, and I don't think it mattered to them where they did it. They just went where they could raise the money. Gary Webb says his stories were largely based on the testimony of a drug dealer with Contra connections who became a U.S. government witness. But nine months after the series was published, the controversy continues. Some of the heavyweights of American journalism have examined Webb's work and found it reckless, often wrong. Just this week, Webb was pulled off the CIA story after his own executive editor admitted the articles oversimplified the origins of the crack epidemic and left out important conflicting evidence. He also wrote, I feel that we did not have proof that top CIA officials knew. But despite the evidence to the contrary, Gary Webb insists his stories were substantially accurate. And many Americans do seem willing to believe that their own government could have been involved in drug smuggling. So was the U.S. government involved in any way? Dateline decided to take a second look. Crack use spread like wildfire in the early 1980s. And in Los Angeles, a drug dealer known as Freeway Ricky Ross was in the middle of it. Prosecutors called Ross the Walmart of crack. He made millions in the early 80s dealing to Los Angeles street gangs. Police say he was among the first to take expensive cocaine powder and cook it into low-cost, highly addictive crack, then distribute it through the gangs. Webb says Freeway Ricky helped trigger an epidemic of human misery. It's destroyed our community. All the black men are in prison, most of us. Rick Ross is now serving a life sentence for cocaine distribution. The women are still strong on the drugs. 
kids with our fathers, with our mothers. And honestly, how much responsibility do you have for that? A lot. A lot of it was my fault. I played, I played the game. Police in Los Angeles say he virtually cornered the crack market thanks to a steady supply of cheap cocaine. A pipeline so good that Ross was able to introduce crack to other cities using his gang contacts and to make himself, he says, a very rich man. On your best day, how much money did you see? <laughs> a couple million, two, three maybe. A day. On a good day. How many days like that were there? A few. Quite a few. Rick Ross's drug supplier did have connections to the Contras. Dateline has been able to confirm that from former Contra leader Eden Pastora. And Pastora admits he received some aid from that drug supplier. But Pastora says he was not aware of any CIA drug connection. So we asked Gary Webb, where is the evidence the CIA knew of any drug dealing? We have to define the CIA. If you're saying that people who are working with the CIA know they were doing it, yeah. Did the director of the Central Intelligence Agency know this? I don't know. This is nonsense. Now retired, Dewey Claridge was the CIA's man in charge of Central America in the early 80s. Yes. He insists the agency had nothing to do with any drug trafficking or with any cover-up. Oh, don't give me the con don't give me the conspiracy bullshit. Come on, you're you're a more intelligent man than that. Well, uh, come on, come on. I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah, 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 this is, this is, there has never been a conspiracy in this country. Never? Gary Webb's version of events may be wrong, but in the mid-1980s, there was a high-level White House conspiracy called Iran-Contra. Whatever you believe, Gary Webb's stories have revived interest in an issue that's been simmering since Ronald Reagan was at the White House. Were U.S. government officials aware of drug smuggling in and around the Contra movement? And did they simply choose to ignore it? One U.S. senator says, absolutely. There's no question in my mind there is a complicity in the flow of drugs into this country, period. A Senate investigation led by John Kerry of Massachusetts found that individuals who provided support for the Contras were involved in drug trafficking and that one or another agency of the U.S. government had information regarding the involvement, either while it was occurring or immediately thereafter. Incredibly, according to Senator Kerry, smugglers even used the U.S. government's own airlift operation at El Salvador's Ilopongo Airport to get cocaine back across the American border. This drug enforcement agent patrolled that same airport in the mid-80s. It was just nonstop traffic coming and going, and nobody ever, ever uh, inspected their planes or their cargo, or whatever. Sele Castillo told Dateline he observed rampant drug smuggling at that airport. Well, what we had was that we had Contra pilots flying out of Ilopango uh, smuggling uh, drugs into the U.S., cocaine specifically. He claims the smuggling was so open it had to be condoned by the U.S. government. Castillo says planes would arrive filled with supplies for the Contras, then leave carrying cocaine for America bound for military airfields in Florida and Texas, offloaded out of sight of the law, then shipped to California and other points in the U.S. And there's more. Castillo says when he reported all of this to his bosses at the DEA, he was told to ignore it. So you were told point blank. Point blank, stay away from it. It's a code operation being run by the White House. In a letter to Dateline, the Drug Enforcement Administration said it has vigorously investigated and no evidence has ever been found to substantiate Mr. Castillo's charges. As for the CIA, it's denied ever aiding or condoning drug smuggling. The reports were reaching the highest councils of our government, in the White House and in the Justice Department. There is no question of that. I can document that. There the White a... House and Justice Department disputed Kerry's report at the time, but he still believes some government officials turned a blind eye towards drug dealing in the mid-1980s after the time at the heart of Gary Webb's stories. There were no indictments or prosecutions. And ultimately, those allegations of drug smuggling became just a footnote in the scandal known as Iran-Contra. According to Kerry, at the time, American officials were more afraid of the evils of communism than the ravages of crack cocaine. I'll tell you, South Central Los Angeles and every other city in America are owed an explanation. 
people knew that drug trafficking was getting mixed up in the flow of weapons. People knew there were bad types involved in this operation. They didn't turn off the spigot. That's plain and simple. The CIA is reviewing the charges made by Webb and says it will conclude its investigation by the end of the year. The House Select Committee on Intelligence says it will issue its own report and that its investigation will not be affected by the Mercury News' reevaluation of its series.